Belts are used to run the blowers on 10,000 horsepower racing engines, the powertrains of 150 horsepower motorbikes, and more recently, the drivetrains of many bicycles. I've been an avid user of belt drivetrains on my bikes for about 12 years now, and have somehow clocked over 135,000 kilometers on these chain alternatives. I've taken belt drivetrains up the world's highest roads, across dry deserts, through wild jungles, along windy beaches, over monstrous salt flats, and into epic snowscapes. In this video, I'll tell you why belt drive is better than chain drive for many cycling applications. I'll then explain why you don't see belt drive on more bikes. And lastly, I'll comprehensively answer every question I've ever received about these drivetrains. Throughout this video, keep in mind that I'm referring to my experience with one specific product, Gates Carbon Drive CDX. But this is not a sponsored video and I have no affiliation with Gates. If I come across as enthusiastic, it's simply because I'm a happy customer. Right. Let's start with the characteristics of bicycle belt drive. A bicycle belt is different from all other types of belt. They are constructed from a polymer that is reinforced using multiple carbon fiber cords. It's these tensile cords that make them especially strong. Rob Rast from FLX Bikes shows that you can even lift up the back of a van without breaking a bicycle belt. These belts are usually paired with steel rear sprockets and alloy front sprockets and can be run single speed or multi-speed when paired with a gearbox or internal gear hub. So why is belt drive better than chain drive? Firstly, belts are very long lasting. Most cyclists go years without needing to replace a belt or sprocket. I've recently put 35,000 kilometers into a belt drivetrain that saw many steep hills and every riding condition possible. Others have even exceeded 40,000 kilometers. This is often three to four times further than you can travel with a chain. Belts are also very low maintenance. This is because they don't require any grease or lubrication and much less cleaning too. Just a splash of water is often it. Due to the lack of grease and oil, belts stay very clean. This means you'll never get black muck on your hands or pants ever again. Belts also run eerily silent. Normally, all you can hear is a light hum coming from your drivetrain. Belts are particularly good in adverse riding conditions. This is due to the sprocket design, which can very effectively shed debris from its surfaces, unlike a chain. But it's also because you'll likely be pairing your belt with a gearbox drivetrain which keeps your critical drive components sealed away and protected from the elements. Belts do not rust. This is advantageous at the beach or in cold parts of the world where salt is put on the roads. Ultimately, belts save you a lot of time. Most people don't like maintaining their bikes, sourcing replacement parts, or going to bike shops for repairs. Belted bikes minimize all of these things so you can spend more time learning about bikes on this YouTube channel. Okay, so if belts are so good, why don't we see them on more bikes? The biggest downside is that belts are not compatible with derailleur gears. This means you will need to use a gearbox or internal gear hub for the gears. Now I love gearboxes and think they're perfect for hardworking cargo, commuter and touring bikes. Gearboxes are strong, reliable, low maintenance, less susceptible to damage, and you can even change gears while stationary. But gearboxes are often one kilogram heavier and 5% less efficient than derailleur gears. They also don't shift that well under a load. So if you want the lightest or fastest bike, it won't be sporting a belt. Belts also require a special frame. These frames must have a way to adjust the tension. They must have a split in the rear triangle to install a one-piece belt. And they must have an especially stiff rear triangle so that the belt cannot skip on the rear sprocket. Belts are often not found in bike shops. This means that you will need to order replacements online. 
it's obviously best to do this before you need them. Belts components have a higher upfront cost. A new CDX drivetrain is around $250 or 250 euros. But keep in mind the cost per kilometer can be similar to a high performance chain drivetrain due to the longer wear life. Belts cannot be repaired. This means that if you damage a belt, it will need to be replaced. The good news is that broken belts are uncommon. I've only ever broken one, but you should still carry a spare belt on long rides. They coil up small and weigh under 100 grams, which is about the same weight as the chain breaker tool that you can now leave at home. Okay, let's now move on to the questions, which will get more technical as we go. But first, if you're interested in using belt drive for touring or bikepacking, check out my touring and bikepacking bike buyer's guides. You can learn everything about the bikes before comparing over 80 belt drive bikes and 200 more with chain drivetrains. They're both updated yearly for free and you can find the download links below. How do belts feel to ride? They feel like an even smoother version of a well-lubricated chain. Despite the way they look, there is no noticeable stretch in the belt thanks to the carbon fiber tensile cords that are hidden inside. Why don't they use belt drive bikes in the Tour de France? To compete at the highest level of cycling, it's necessary for riders to have the lightest and most efficient bikes. Unfortunately, belt drive bikes are heavier and less efficient as a result of the gearbox. So you'll never see them in the Tour de France. Don't automotive timing chains last longer than timing belts? This is often true, but keep in mind that belts on bikes are a different application and technology. All durability tests suggest that belts last longer on a bicycle. How expensive are belt drive bikes? A belt drive bike with a three-speed internal gear hub starts at $599. And a bit over 1,000 euros gets you a bike with an eight-speed hub. The prices go well into five figures for fancy e-bikes. Can you use belt drive with e-bikes? Most belts are approved for e-bike use, but in the Gates range, it's only the CDC and CDX models that will allow for mid-drive motors. There's a torque limit to be aware of too. The lower cost CDC model is approved for 50 Newton meter motors, while CDX is good for 90 Newton meters. Can you use belt drive in the mud and snow? I've taken my belt drive bikes through thousands of kilometers of mud and snow, but keep in mind it's only Gates CDX that's rated for riding in the mud. And the models that are rated to shed snow and ice are CDX, CDC, and CDN. Can you use belt drive on fixed gear bikes? You can, and it looks pretty rad. Can you use belt drive with full suspension bikes? Yes, a spring-loaded tensioner makes this possible. The tensioner is actually a super cool bit of kit, as it accounts for increasing chainstay length as you get deeper into your travel. For more, check out bikes by Zeroed, Nikolai, and Cavalry. Do belts ever snap? They do. The good news is that a broken belt is not a common occurrence, and it's usually preventable. You can skip to this time where I discuss prevention in detail. Do vandals cut belts? This has never happened to me, and I have never heard of this happening to anyone else. How expensive are belt drive components? A replacement drivetrain for my bike costs around $250, which is a lot. But when you consider you can travel more than 35,000 kilometers for this price, it's not any different to a high performance chain drivetrain. That said, chains can be run cheaper. I'd estimate that Shimano Alfine components work out at half the price on a per kilometer basis. You might be enticed by the entry level Gates Sidetrack drivetrain costing just $100, but it lasts less than half the distance of CDX resulting in a similar cost per kilometer. What does a belt drivetrain look like after 35,000 kilometers? The front and rear sprockets are now less than one millimeter thick and are sharp to touch. 
This is approximately one third of the thickness of a new sprocket. But I've seen sprockets worn down much more than mine. Aren't there limited gear ratios available on belt drive bikes? There are lots of gear ratio options these days. You'll find eight front sprockets, 13 rear sprockets, and 23 belt lengths in the Gates CDX range. Can you modify a frame for belt drive? You can, and I've actually added belt splitters to multiple frames over the years. Some heavy duty frames will be well suited to modification, but for the best user experience, I recommend using a frame that's engineered with the correct stiffness to use a belt. If your modified frame turns out to be too flexy, the belt can lose too much tension and will slip on the rear sprocket. You can combat this with a higher belt tension, but this is less efficient and wears out your sprockets faster. What's the belt maintenance like? Belt drivetrains are often said to be zero maintenance, but I didn't squeeze 35,000 kilometers out of my drivetrain without a little bit of care. Debris from the road or trail wears the sprockets down quicker, so make sure to periodically use a toothbrush and a splash of water to remove any grit. Do belts ever make noise? In dry environments with ultra-fine dust, you will likely end up with a squeaky belt. I use treadmill silicon lubricant to keep things quiet. The good thing is that it's not an aerosol, so you can put it in tiny bottles for short adventures. There is a new product from Universal Transmissions that dries on as a film. I'll be testing that next. Please avoid the Hanselina Belt Care Stick as it's very sticky and attracts grit. How do you set the belt tension? Unlike chains, belts do not get longer with use, so you won't need to adjust the tension until the sprockets have worn down significantly. There are two typical ways to set the tension of a belt. Some bikes use sliding rear dropouts, others use adjustable eccentric bottom bracket shells. You can use your smartphone to determine the appropriate tension. By plucking the belt, your smartphone app will decipher the frequency and determine if your tension is correct. That said, I've found that frames with especially stiff rear triangles will allow for significantly less belt tension than is recommended by Gates. So, fit a snubber on your bike, which will keep the belt on the rear sprocket, and tinker with your tension. How do you find the right belt length? Gates has a calculator on their website that allows you to input both the chainstay length of your frame and the gear ratio you're looking to achieve. It will then spit out all of the sprocket sizes and belt lengths that will work on your bike. Do belt drive bikes destroy hub and bottom bracket bearings? It's possible that a belted bike with the maximum belt tension could prematurely wear bearings. But on a properly engineered frame, the tension while riding will be similar to using a chain. Are there any belt drive manufacturers other than Gates? Gates has the biggest market share by a huge margin. They claim more than 1,000 bike models are fitted with their drivetrains. You might have seen drivetrains from other manufacturers too, such as Veer, Advanced, Accord, Driveline, or Continental, which is now a discontinued product. Via is the most interesting of the lot. They use a split belt design, which means the drivetrain can be retrofitted to any bike with adjustable dropouts. I cannot comment on the performance or reliability, but the Via sprockets are currently available in just two different gear ratios, which significantly hinders its use. Advanced claims to operate with less belt tension than other manufacturers, thanks to the deeper belt teeth, but there's almost zero information about them online. What's the difference between the Gates carbon drive models? There are currently four different drivetrains, Sidetrack, CDN, CDC, and CDX. The best way to compare these products is to look at the table in the Gates catalog. As the products get more expensive, the performance increases as a result of more advanced materials. For example, inside the belts, there are two different compounds for the teeth and three different materials for the carbon tensile cords. The sprockets are made using different types of steel, as well as aluminium and nylon composite. The CDX drivetrain offers the most strength, durability, and weather resistance and can be used on the widest array of bikes. 
there are now two different versions of CDX. Regular CDX is what you've seen me using on my Koga World Traveler for half a decade. This model uses stainless steel rear sprockets and either stainless steel or aluminium front sprockets, depending on the number of teeth. CDX black sprockets are brand new this year and are designed to be extra durable. These chromoloy steel sprockets should be better suited to torquey mid-drive e-bikes and with the new fin tooth design should shed debris better too. Are there any known Gates carbon drive problems? In 2015, it was very easy to break the teeth on the first generation CDN plastic coated rear sprockets. As a solution, Gates upgraded CDN users to stainless steel sprockets under warranty. And in 2016, some roll-off hub belt sprockets developed a creak on the original splined carrier. This issue was resolved in 2018 with a new carrier design. Why do some belts wear prematurely? The conditions you cycle in are likely the biggest factor when it comes to component wear. Gritty conditions wear out your sprockets much quicker than clean conditions. So make sure to clean your drivetrain for the best mileage. High amounts of torque also wear sprockets faster. So expect less distance from high torque mid-drive e-bikes. If you want, you can reduce the effective torque on your rear sprocket by pedaling at a higher cadence or by employing a higher drive ratio. The rear sprocket size is important too, as smaller sprockets have fewer teeth engaged and will therefore wear proportionately faster. I get great mileage from my 22 tooth sprockets. A high belt tension will result in faster wear. This is one reason why you want a dedicated belt drive frame so that you can employ a lower tension. Belt alignment is another key factor. You will wear your sprockets much faster if your belt is not perfectly straight. Why do belts break? Belts can break from poor alignment, insufficient tension, or internal cord damage. If the belt rides up onto the rear sprocket, it can damage both the belt teeth and the internal tensile cords. This situation occurs when there is insufficient tension the rear sprocket is loose on your hub or there's poor alignment between the sprockets. A product called a belt snubber should ideally be fitted to all belt drive bikes. These guide wheels make it impossible for your belt to lift onto the rear sprocket teeth. Belts can also be damaged before they're even fitted to your bike. Twisting, back bending or crimping belts can damage the carbon cords. Ryan Van Duzer made a video about how his user error caused a belt to snap. He rolled his belt onto the rear sprocket, damaging the internal cords. The lesson learned is that if your belt comes off, take your rear wheel out, put your belt on the rear sprocket, and then refit your wheel. Are chains or belts more efficient? Belt drive is just as efficient as chain drive, but can be more or less efficient depending on the scenario. I'm going to get a bit nerdy here, but just know that the small differences in drive efficiency across all these scenarios result in virtually no difference in your riding speed. It's the gearbox or internal gear hub that's paired with belt drive that results in the greatest efficiency losses, usually somewhere between 2 and 6%, or slower riding speeds of 0.25 to 0.75 kilometers per hour. But this is in perfect lab conditions, Expect the difference to narrow when the riding conditions are muddy or gritty. With that preamble out of the way, some have suggested that belt drive is less efficient than chain drive because when you spin the cranks with your hands, you can feel some resistance. But this test doesn't tell the full story. According to data collected from three different lab tests, belts do have an inferior drive efficiency at low power outputs. This is because a belt is always under tension, whereas a chain can run with some slack. As we introduce more pedal or electric power into a drivetrain, a belt soon becomes just as efficient as a chain. The TRIA University lab test suggests the crossover point is at 120 watts power output while the Friction Facts lab test suggests it's up over 200 watts, and Universal Transmissions found the crossover to be at just 30 watts. Either way, most cyclists will hit these crossover points. 
Universal Transmissions, or UT, has recently published some additional belt and chain data that's worth discussing. Please note that UT developed the original belt drivetrain in partnership with Gates, and they are also the distributor for Gates Carbon Drive in Europe. As a result, we should remain skeptical of the chain efficiency, resistance, and wear rate data, as these numbers can vary significantly between chain models and lubricants used. All right, let's get on to the interesting findings. The first is with regard to the drive efficiency on worn chains and belts. The data suggests that worn belts run more efficiently than worn chains after both 5,000 km and 10,000 km. In fact, the belt at 10,000 km was running more efficiently than the chain at 5,000 km. This is simply because the chain gets longer over time and can no longer mesh as well with the sprockets. How about if we use a new chain with the 5,000 km old sprockets? That's also less efficient than a belt after the same distance. But keep in mind, you'll go through multiple chains over the lifespan of one belt. This means the efficiency of a belt drivetrain continually reduces over time, while the chain will jump between 96 and 98% efficient, depending on how worn it is. The other interesting test was regarding belt drive efficiency at low, medium, and high tensions. This test shows that low tension is the best at most power outputs, but by 50 watts, all belt tensions are within 1%, suggesting tension plays a minor role in cycling speed. If you've made it to the end here, you deserve an honorary PhD in belt drive. Congratulations. Many world bike travelers have now demonstrated in the worst riding conditions possible that belt drive bikes are long lasting, strong, and low maintenance. If you prioritize durability and ease of use over everything else, belt drive is the best drive option available. I recommend belts for touring, commuting, bikepacking, cargo hauling, and recreational riding in particular. However, belts are not the best for every application. If you want the fastest and lightest bike, you will still be best served by chains and derailers. To learn more about gearboxes, check out my videos on affordable Shimano internal gear hubs, as well as roll-off hubs, pinion gearboxes, and Effie gear gearboxes. There are also a bunch of new gearboxes coming in for 2023. I'll link all of these videos down below.